Hans Worm Hat. I just want to do a quick video on the opening line of the Beatitudes. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I think that this is something that, I don't think that the meaning of this is that obscured or that hidden. I think it's something that should make you stop in your tracks and think about it for a while, what it means. But I think that this is one of the less obscure statements that, uh, obscure, maybe not the best word, but Jesus openly talked about how, yes, he's going to tell us things in parables. And in the end, he's going to speak plainly to us. And I guess one of the way, one of the reasons for that is that, evil people are not going to understand. They're going to see what they want to see rather than seeing the truth. And in that way, they can easily twist the words to mean whatever they want them to mean rather than understanding the meaning behind it. There's only one truth. And that's kind of a problem. You think of church religion today. People really have this notion that anything is true that anybody can have any opinion and it's valid because it's their opinion. That's honestly how people feel, that truth is totally subjective. And of course that's, that's wrong. There's one truth. There's only one truth. Something is either true or it's not true. And the same thing with understanding what Jesus said. It's not open to infinite interpretation. There's a, a correct way to think about it. How often are you having a discussion with somebody and they throw up a Bible verse that has no relevance whatsoever, or the meaning of it is actually the opposite of what this person is trying to say it is, but I don't know, maybe they're just throwing it out there to throw it out there, or in their mind it's all twisted. Anyways, this is one that I just think is really great. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, because it's something that I think that I understand now. Yeah, it's talking about poor, similar as unto rich, poor. Rich or poor, a lot of it has to do with how how you were brought up, what, what you were brought into this world with, this earth with. Yeah, and how much you are in the system, how much you're bought into the system. If you're going to be rich, you're going to be heavily involved with the community, most likely, a lot of people are going to know you, probably have a lot of friends, you're probably a big influencer. Just turn all of those concepts into the spirit, talking about the spirit. These are the pastors, these are the people who, similar to having really nice clothes, looking really flashy, when you walk up to them, they have all the jargon ready and they're throwing all these words out there and they... Oh, praise Jesus every five seconds. And they get an extra slice of cheese on their sandwich. Oh, God is just blessing me on this holy day. You know the kind of people that I'm talking about. It's a similar idea, poor versus rich, as opposed to somebody that would be really humble about it. They don't... There's a line where it becomes totally inappropriate and phony. They're playing a character. And maybe they think it's legitimate, but... At a certain point, you're just a phony, and fake it till you make it is one of the biggest mottos of Tranny Land. Are these people really religious, or are they just putting on some sort of persona? And I think that's what this is talking about. It's It should be striking, because if your pastor ever was giving a, a sermon on something like this, this very statement is talking about people like Shim. You, person who gets a paycheck to preach to people, that's rich in spirit. You're rich in spirit. You're not poor in spirit. That's not humble. Jesus Christ would heal people and tell them, don't, don't tell people that I did this. Just go pay your dues. Just go do, do your stuff at the temple. <clears throat> and don't tell anybody. That's... That's being, you know, humble in your spirit. You're not being overly flashy with it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. 
Not everyone that saith unto, unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. A lot of these people, they're not doing God's will by being a pastor who, it's so funny when you go read the pastor Bible, the pastor bios online, it's like almost every pastor out there, guess what their hobbies are? It's like, I love woodworking. <laughs> they all, they think that they're Jesus. They're almost all into woodworking. Uh, anyways, <laughs> many will say unto me in that day, Lord, 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 have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Anybody that goes to a brick-and-mortar masonry church, this is the clergy. This is the strat in the front row who cries every Sunday and yells the loudest during the, the singing, puts up the hands, comes and hugs everybody. And those types of people are usually wrecks underneath the surface. The people with the most happy, oh, gee, I can just talk about people that I know. People that are, oh, Jesus is my boyfriend. Like people like that, where they come off like that in public around you. And then they're just these horrible, crippling depression, popping a bunch of pharmaceutical wrecks underneath the surface. That's being a phony. They're being a phony, and that's rich in spirit. You can even think of, like, desserts. You don't eat a rich dessert every single night. You don't spend your whole day outwardly talking about how amazing of a spiritual person you are every single day. If if a crazy miracle happens, okay, yeah, start crying, throwing up your hands, praising God in the streets if a miracle happens. If you get a free fry at the McDonald's, you don't have to start talking about how you know, God blessed you with a free extra pair of fries at McDonald's. So those are, those are my feelings on that. Schweizer, oh, I'll go here because I have... I have some slides. John chapter 15, verse 19. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of this, the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Just like people were trying to stone Jesus Christ when he would go into the temples and preach. If you went into a modern church and started actually preaching the truth and not just being a showy, flashy, oh, look how great I am they would not like you. The world's not supposed to like you. The fact that pastors are these pillars of the community, a Masonic reference, that should show you that that's not the right thing. Why are, why are the pastors loved? And why does a pastor even exist? And that gets into the Pauline stuff. It's because if you go to a church, they're just going to be teaching you Pauline doctrine. They're going to be teaching you, oh, God is love. God is love, which Sure, that's fine and great, but that's not the message that people need to hear today. People need to hear the, the truth, the, the cold, hard truth, that they live in a phony, make-believe, satanic deception reality. And that's not what they're teaching at, at modern churches. Luke chapter 20, verses 46 and 47. Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and, give, and, lo <laughs> and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues, and the chief rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a show make long prayers, the same shall receive greater damnation. I always even got awkwarded out. I mean, so obviously making long prayers, people that are constantly leading prayers, that's not how it's supposed to be. Anybody who has a problem or anybody who wants to have prayers should be leading a prayer, or why is it always this one person? That's spiritually rich. The fact that they believe that their prayer is somehow more powerful than somebody else's, that they're always the one that's up there and doing it. Uh, nobody should support that. Why are you up there always leading the prayer? Like, what you're saying is more important than what I have to say. And you have this whole group of people just following what you do blindly. You're not Jesus. Who do you think you are? 
I didn't even like this. This would creep me out when I would go to people's houses and they would do a prayer before before dinner like this. A lot of times just a repeated one that they would say every the same one every night. Or forcing their children into it. Oh, little Johnny, it's your turn to say prayer tonight. Always weirded me out. I pray, I pray about my food, but I do it just in my head to myself. Anyways, I think I've said enough. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. God bless everybody.